Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back for another video. Today we are continuing our series on the game Atlas. And this is what I guess I would call day three of a new character being created. And in the first video, we started out at the Freeport. We showed you how to get your first ramshackle sloop, your first boat. And then in video two, we sailed that boat from the Freeport to this uh, lawless island that we're at right now. And we built this little two by two little base with a bed in it, got some tools and things like that to just get us started. So I just woke up, um, I'm still here, I'm still alive. <laughs> no one captured me or destroyed my base, thankfully. It does look like someone destroyed my ramshackle sloop though. I went outside and it looks like my sloop was destroyed. So that does happen from time, you know, if you leave a boat, unattended, unprotected on the side of an island and you log off, most likely you're going to wake up the next day and it's destroyed. So be aware of that. Uh, you can build armored ship docks to protect your boat, uh, but they do cost a lot of gold. That's one of the structures you see off in the distance there with a schooner in it. That's an armored shipyard, uh, which can protect your boat. So welcome back for another video, everybody. If you're new to the game of Atlas, hopefully these videos will help you just kind of get a better understanding of the game. Um, again, everything is just my opinion in these videos. So as you can see, I'm ready to level up. Uh, so I'll go into my inventory. Early on when you're a new character, uh, it's up to you whether you want to have a lot of extra weight to carry things, but personally, I would rather have more health to obviously stay alive, more stamina, to be able to run and fight more, and then more fortitude, which will affect things like your temperature and how much food you use up, I believe, too. As well as, you know, how much torpor you have, which is how much you can be uh, basically hit and take uh, torpor damage before you're knocked out. So I'm going to put a point in fortitude and one in stamina. So I'm level 9 currently, go back to the first skill tree, uh, let me eat something really quick just so my character is not making all kinds of noises. So today we're going to talk a little bit about the skills. Uh, the first tree of course is survivalism, and here you'll find a lot of useful skills in the game. Pretty much almost all of these are worth buying. Um, the water temperature isn't really important, but definitely your oxygen reduction, which is how long you can stay underwater, and your swimming speed are both very good. Uh, if you level up at least your oxygen rate to at least the level two and your swimming speed, and then you combine that with, in the Beast Mastery tree here, you can get this sneaking skill. So if you get the highest level of the sneaking skill and your oxygen skills, you actually can go down and get the sunken treasures without needing a diving attachment, I've found. Now granted, sometimes you will still be seen by a shark or you'll be seen by a jellyfish or something like that and they'll still attack you, but having that sneaking skill, which is found under Beast Mastery, here I'll just go ahead and unlock Beast Mastery. This sneaking skill helps you not be detected by wild animals as much. So you can actually go down and get the sunken treasures without even needing a diving attachment, which is very useful. Uh, the swimming speed obviously is, you know, just useful in general too. The hand harvesting skills are very useful as well, also under survivalism. Uh, they'll help you get, uh, you know, obviously your resources much faster. The medicine tree uh, becomes important later on when you get into PvP. Uh, eventually you'll learn how to make med kits uh, that can heal you and your teammates as well as your allies actually um, in a combat situation. The cooking and farming tree, a very useful tree. Uh, you'll learn how to make different foods and drinks which do affect your character. Some of them give you buffs um, which might make you do more damage, take less damage, uh, a variety of different uh, buffs you get from that. The vitamin depletion rate is also very useful. Uh, it helps you as your character is running around. It will make it so your vitamins, which are on the right hand side of the screen there in those little colored bars, they won't drain as fast. Let me eat some food here. My character's hungry. 
So the survival tree, you know, most of these are pretty useful and pretty important. Like I said, the only one that's really not super important that I've found, in my opinion, is this water temperature, improved water for temperature fortitude. That one doesn't really seem to be that crucial, in my opinion. Um, the building tree, you definitely want most of this stuff if you're going to be a builder. Uh, in this tree, it also unlocks a lot of important equipment uh, perks as well, like the armory here. You need that to make armor, the weapon, melee weaponry that will make your swords, your uh, maces, all that kind of stuff. You also unlock seamanship in, in the construction tree as well, which will unlock everything for boats. And then all the way down here at the bottom of the construction tree is where you get this advanced automation, which makes uh, all of the farms. So the lumber yard, the mine, the quarry, uh, warehouse, all of those uh, buildings that help you farm resources passively. And those are super helpful early on in the game. So the earliest you can get a warehouse and farms built near your base, the better, uh, because you'll just be gathering so many more resources even when your character isn't even online. The Beast Mastery Tree, uh, this is obviously your tames. So, uh, you know, if you're interested in taming animals and using them as a mount, uh, you would unlock this tree. Again, as I mentioned before, you also can unlock a sneaking skill in this tree, which allows you to be more hidden against wild animals. But here is where you get like underwater taming to do to tame seahorses and dolphins. Uh, this is also where you unlock all of the breeding skills as well, as well as some combat skills for your tames. Like this, uh, nature's cry and nature's touch are both skills you use for combat. Nature's cry is for attack damage, and nature's touch will heal your tame when you use it. Next would be the hand-to-hand -hand combat uh, tree. This tree, personally, I don't use a lot of, but there are a lot of skills in here that are helpful, uh, like these uh, shrug it off. These are good so that you don't get knocked out as easily uh, if you're hit with a melee weapon. Uh, also, if you unlock the entire tree, down here at the bottom, you earn this martial fitness skill which is a passive skill that reduces your overall stamina drain from your attacks by 10%. So that can be quite useful. Once you unlock melee weaponry, this is where you get all of the skills for the sword and the mace. And there are special power skills like this circular slice and this tremendous force that are special attacks that you can unlock for those weapons. And they do a lot more damage. You can also unlock uh, this feat called Critical Strike, which when you activate it and then attack somebody, you'll do uh, drastically more damage. So definitely look at all of these and read what they do and try them out. Uh, remember that every time you level up your character right here in your inventory, there's a button that you can respec your skills. So if you unlock a few skills for certain things and you don't really think they're useful for you right now, you can always respec and change your points. So keep that in mind. Working our way down the skills here, just I'll try to move along a little quickly here, but archery, uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. It's everything for bows and things like that, but it does also unlock grenades, uh, guns. This is where you unlock firearms in the game. And then once you unlock firearms, uh, you can get, of course, cannons and rifles and things like that, because in the uh, firearm tree, you can unlock artillery here. That's your cannons and your mortars, puckles, weapons like that. Here, it's raining, so let me uh, run back to our base here. Be a little more quiet in here. There we go. All right. Go back to the skill tree. So in the firearm tree, you can unlock a bunch of skills for pistols and then uh, the blunderbuss, which is kind of like a musket shotgun type of weapon, and then the rifle, the carbine rifle. 
and you can get skills that help you reload faster and things like that. In the armory tree, of course, this is where you learn how to craft armor, uh, fur armor and plate armor, and hide armor as well. There's also skills up here that help you for temperature penalties, movement speed, and just the durability of your armor as well. So as you unlock all of these, those get better. Uh, you also can learn skills for shields as well. You can learn a, a shield bash move, uh, and, and those are pretty effective in PvP, so definitely check those out if, if uh, PvP is going to be your thing. The medicine tree, this is where you're going to learn how to make med kits. Um, there is an antidote as well, I think that's for the seahorse poison that can do damage to you, but it's not used too often, but the med kits are definitely useful. Um, and then eventually you learn these uh, moves called Savior, and it actually will heal all of your teammates and I believe your allies as well that are all nearby you. So, very useful. The Artillery Tree is, of course, your cannons, like I mentioned before. Uh, large cannons, ballistas, swivel guns, mortars, uh, these Greek fire, which uh, which are like oil jars that you throw on the ground and then you light them on fire, uh, puckle guns, and explosive barrels. So this is a, obviously a, a fighting uh, skill tree that you'll want to go into if you're going to be attacking things. This skill at the bottom of the tree is super important as well. This is how you learn how to make manned puckles, manned large cannons, and manned ship cannons. When you place this down on the ground it actually makes an NPC crew member appear and this is super helpful when you're building a base when you're building a boat uh, you can get crew members just by paying a little extra gold when you craft the cannon or when you craft that puckle and that's super helpful uh, and we'll show that in another video in action but this is a great way to get crew members uh, for your team the seamanship tree, of course, this is everything for boats and boat building, how to make all the sails and the planks. And then as well under this tree, you unlock captaineering and piracy. These are two other skill trees. So we'll look at those. Captaineering, if you are gonna be sailing the ship more often, you want this tree completely specked out in my opinion. Uh, you unlock uh, lots of abilities for your crew uh, to man the ship uh, better. They use less gold for payment, uh, things like that. They eat less food. Uh, they can re You can repair the boat faster if you have this tree all filled up. And then as well as a couple of feats, the skills, uh, a reload overdrive, which when you activate that will pretty much instantly reload your cannons once. So you get like a double shot. And then Rally the Troops is another skill that you unlock, and it basically makes all your crew members uh, like repair faster and reload the cannons faster and things like that. So super important uh, if you're a boat captain. Here's the Cooking and Farming Tree. Uh, so it's all of the skills you'll need for cooking food and for farming vegetables in the game. You also learn like the water barrel and things like that under this skill tree as well. The music tree uh, we talked about in the last video, it's a great tree to unlock early on, especially if you want to get a lot of XP and gold fast, uh, because you can learn how to make the accordion and the war drums, which can play the songs. And you find songs out on the ocean in the floatsome boxes, which will be floating on the top of the ocean. And when you pick them up uh, with a grapple hook or by hand, you'll find songs. And when you play the song, some of them will give you a gold buff, so you'll get more gold uh, for a short amount of time, or you'll earn more XP for a short amount of time as well. And then the ones for the war drums are typically boat related, like so for faster reloads, uh, improved repairing, and things like that. So the music tree, uh, super helpful. You can either be the person who plays the songs, uh, and you'll get more uh, the amount of time that it'll play and things like that or you can actually be a dancer <laughs> and you can help the person playing the music by being a dancer and there's other skills for that. The last uh, skill tree is piracy. 
This is a great one, of course, because this is a pirate game. This is where you unlock things like the, uh, the grapple hook, handcuffs, flare guns, cages, uh, things like that. You also can do more damage against the Army of the Damned by unlocking skills. You can get more things when you shovel the ground looking for things. The plunderer skill is if you destroy something that has been either destroyed, uh, like if you have a shipwreck, you can peel the planks back off it and get more of the resources back. Eagle Eyes is a good skill, so it makes you help see where treasure maps are. So when you have a, a you've, if you've picked up a treasure map and you have it in your hot bar at the bottom of the screen and you're out looking for that map, it will show a big beam of light where the map is. The Diver skill uh, just helps you stay underwater longer when you're using the diving attachment. And then Stout Liver is a good PvP skill to buy because it helps you, it unlocks the skill to make Grog, which is a drink in the game that gives you a good PvP bonus. Uh, more damage and less damage taken, things like that. It also refills your food and water. And this stout liver, you can go further down and it just makes it so you get back more of your nutritional value if your character drinks alcohol in the game. All right, and then lastly, these are your quest skills in the game. Uh, so as you do the PvE quests in the game, like talking to the friendly mermaid or killing the blue whale, uh, defeating the kraken, things like that, the giant squid, you'll unlock different skills. For doing so and they're basically a permanent skill like see if you destroy the ghost ship uh treasures you dig will get plus 20 percent in gold so those are really important to get as early as you can because they will give you a permanent buff for the rest of the season hopefully that's helpful and that gives you a little bit of a rundown on the skill trees again just try to experiment with them and see which ones suit your character the best and don't forget you can respec your character uh, right here in your inventory once per level so if i wanted to respec right now let's say uh, i could do that and see it completely wipes out all my skills and i just have to rebuy them again now, before I rebuy them again, though, I do have to put my points in, like, health and stamina, fortitude, things like that, and that gives me my points. So I have 39 points available, and I'm now level 10. If I go back to my inventory, see, I leveled up so I can respec again if I wanted to. So every time you level up, you can do the respec. Hope this is helpful, everybody. Thanks for watching. If you have any ideas for Atlas videos, make sure you leave them in the comments below. Hope you'll become a subscriber, and we'll see you on the next video.